Do you remember your first homebrew? Hi guys, this is my channel about home brewing and today we have the honor to try someone's first homebrew. This was sent to me, kindly sent to me, by a viewer. His name is Shander Jett. I uh, hope I pronounced that right. This is the first beer. I think he brewed it with someone else. It's a mango IPA. Take some balls there to brew a, like a mango IPA for your first beer. What did you brew on your first beer? Comment down below and how did it uh, yeah, turn out? Please let us know or let me know. Chandiet's first beer, what an honor, mango IPA. I also got the recipe for this one, so let's crank this one open and put it into a glass. Okay. Are you ready? And uh, yeah, he actually told me that he wasn't uh, totally satisfied with this beer. I want to see if I can pick something out. It's very, very lively and uh, yeah, too bad. It's bottled conditioned beer and uh, yeah, the yeast sediment is all kicked up. So um, this will be uh, like more murky and uh, yeah, you can see and yeasty than uh, we could hope for. But I'm going to try it. So it's uh, overcarved. That could be from uh, maybe an infection or maybe bottled too early. So there were more sugars for the yeast to consume or um, over priming. Sorry, Chandler Jet. So far, not so good. Yeah, um, I will put the uh, recipe up on my Patreon site as well. So what do we got here? We got a uh, very murky, one finger, like loose head, white head. Not that good looking. It's not that I have a problem with hazy beers really, but uh, there's good looking beers and there are beers that ain't that good looking. This is more like a yeah, dishwatery murkiness. But it smells amazing. Quite a shock. You really get the mango, the, uh, the fruitiness. Just screaming out there like concentrated fruits. So bad about the um, yeah the bottle kicking up all of that yeast because really nice aroma uh, reminds me a little about my um, the Sigmund was quite I did which uh, I fermented really hot 42 C. And uh, yeah, which froze at minus 40 C, cool crash. Put a link up to that one. It was a recent video. Yeah, so you get a fruity, like a biscuity, bready. Gonna have a look at the, uh, the recipe, but there's a really like a biscuity malt there. As I said, like, fr fruits, um, concentrated like, canned fruits, mango, orange. Okay, let's uh, dive in. Cheers, Shander Jet. Uh, 
please, please make it a custom to always send me a, a bottle of beer when you brew. It's not infected. It's quite nice. It's a little bit sweet. Now, nice mouthfeel, some harshness to it. Don't really know where that comes from. There's some, uh, like a use of alcohols which um, shows that it, it, maybe it's not perfectly uh, clean fermented out but it's a very like a low level that could be from um, uh, not using uh, as much yeast as the uh, wort needed uh, could be from uh, not managing your temperature and uh, yeah, not getting as much oxygen in it yeah, with the uh, the yeast cells provided. It's a balancing there, but the uh, little harshness there. I think it's like a hop burn, actually. Like a small hop burn. So, and that will mellow with time if you just let the bottle sit. But uh, you really should, if you have some left, when the bottles, so uh, the yeast don't uh, get kicked up. It's not really um, that yeasty. Even with the yeast in it, I don't, I'm not afraid, I'm a brewer, I'm not afraid of yeast, so it's not that. And um, I said it before in this channel, if it was a, like a wheat beer or a saison, I most of the times prefer the yeast going in, so it's not a yeah, really issue, but if it's meant to be like a clean uh, fermented beer, you really want the yeast to stay behind. It was quite a good amount of yeast in there, so maybe it's just um, bottled too early. Because, like I said, it's not infected. At least I can pick that up. It's quite good beer. So if this was my first beer, I would be... Uh, very pleased with myself. There's some things to improve, and uh, I think it's most fermentation. And uh, yeah, we will have a look at the recipe and see if we can get anything from that. Yeah, this was brewed with his friend. Don't know the name of his friend. Um, yeah, you can um, channel yet? You can fill in with whatever you want. So, okay, this was uh, a 23 liter brew, and as I said, the recipe also goes up on my Patreon site. This is a really nice brew, so um, yeah, the recipe could be a, a nice one to try out if you want to try out something new. Let's top it up. Oh, the yeast is in now. Okay, so 23 liter brew. He used four and a half kilos of Maris Otter and 500 grams of Melanogen malt. So, um, yeah, the biscuity, uh, malty, breaded 
thing there, Mary's Otter, of course. And uh, he uh, mashed at uh, 68C for 60 minutes. It is a bit sweet, so maybe mash a bit lower. Sporting at 75C. 60 minutes boiled, 15 grams of magnum at zero minutes, okay. Um, I think these are at the wrong order. I think it's actually 15 grams of magnum at 60 minutes. And they said Asaka and Mosaic at 45 minutes, but I think he meant 15 minutes. Is it 15, 15 grams? Channel yet? Please comment down below. Use 500 grams of maltodextrin and 500 grams of lactose at 55 minutes. Yeah, that's uh, the reason for the, uh, the body and, of course, the sweetness. And cool down to 21C, pitch US of 5 sapphire. I would, wouldn't brew it at that temp, really. So uh, maybe start at 18, something like that, more than 21. Don't know the amount of yeast used. Dry hopped on day two with Asaka and Nelson Sovin. Don't really know the amount there either. And 850 grams of mango puree on day six. Bottle on day 14. Store for another 10 days. Okay. Um, I think uh, you should have left it longer on the mango puree. And I think that's the uh, problem with the carbonation. I would suggest leaving it for at least two weeks on fruit. To my experience, fruit has a lot of uh, complex sugars that take time to uh, ferment out. So. I wouldn't leave it for less than two weeks if I were to add fruit at fermentation. You could have added the fruits earlier. You didn't have to wait for day six, um, especially not at that temperature, I think, with USO5. If you just did uh, one bag of USO5, I would recommend doing two bags. And uh, of course, if you, have, if you have the means to oxygenate your wort with oxygen, that's also a good idea. Temperature control is another way to uh, improve your beer. But if you don't have, have that, you could do it with a fridge or you can even use my system without a fridge, just to keep keeping temperature control, which works great as well. But you have to choose your yeast accordingly to that method and of course what you want to brew really uh, so yeah I think this is a rushed beer don't really know uh, said it's not perfectly clean fermented out and uh, there's it's a little bit too sweet so I would uh, like Try to ditch the uh, lactose and maltodextrin. This is very complex beer for your first brew. Try something more simple. And then you can experiment with maltodextrin, lactose, uh, fruit purees, fruits, whatever. Brew simple beer, get that in order. Uh, but with that said, I'm quite impressed that this is your first brew. You will be a uh, very good brewer. Yeah, you are a good brewer, but uh, yeah, you will improve. You will learn from every brew, but doing all of that in one brew, in your first brew, you will not learn so much. So keep it very simple at first. Uh, the grain bill was quite simple, but just try to do a simple grain bill, simple hoppage, yeah, yeast, and that's it. And when you have some brews, on your belt, you can try experimenting a little by little. That's my recommendation. 
So guys, uh, I guess I'm rambling now, but the recipe goes up on the Patreon for you guys who want that. So thanks again, Shandy Jet, for sending me the beer and cheers guys and thanks for watching. If you are new to this channel, please hit that um, sub uh, panel or the little ring here, says Dr. Hans. And uh, of course, there's my Patreon page if you want recipes and uh, more content in yeah, all of the other videos. So. Cheers guys and thanks for watching. Dr. Hans out.